Welcome to The Real News. I'm Mark Steiner. Good to have you with us. Aretha Franklin just passed away. Queen of Soul, people called her, because she was the Queen of Soul. From the 1960s, early 60s, to the day she passed, she was our cultural DNA. She defined America with her words and songs. She was a woman who didn't just sing, she lived it. Uh, as I like to say, she walked the talk, she sang the talk. Do you know that when Aretha Franklin found out that people like Angela Davis were in prison, her first move was to say, I want to bail you out. The black people in America made me rich, and I'm going to give back. She wrote to the Panthers and supported them. She marched with Martin Luther King, and she brought us the greatest music of all time and brought people to their knees because she was the one and only Aretha. <laughs> We're doing here Real News. We have a little conversation about her today with two of my favorite people at Real News. And then next week, we're going to bring you a much longer piece about Aretha Franklin. Talk to people all across America about who she was and what she meant and bring you that a week from today. So, but right now, here with me in the studio is executive producer Kalila Harris. Good to have you here, Kalila. Thank you, Mark. Good to be with you as always. And Erica Blount is with us. Erica Blount is a producer here. She produces Rattling Bars with uh, Eddie Conway. Yep. And wrote the book, Love, Peace, and Soul, which was the story of Soul Train, the great TV show that she appeared on my radio show for two hours talking about yes. a little bit ago. And Erica, good to have you here as well. Always a pleasure to be with you. So let's just talk for a minute. We're going to bring a much longer piece, all of us, to bring this piece to our, our viewers. But who was Aretha to you? Especially two of you. I'm really curious because I'm older. So, you know, you start with one of my age, and she was, like, four years older than me. So when she started singing, she was 18, I was 14, whatever that was. So that was, that's, that's one thing to come up with Aretha over all these years and all the changes she made. You two women are a little younger, a lot younger, actually. Just a little. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for that. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, she's like a baby's as old, y'all. Come on. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, but so talk a bit about what Aretha meant to you, what you think she meant to America. Kalila? You know, I think Aretha was definitely the epitome of and really our first instanti instantiation of black girl magic. Um, she was unapologetically black. Um, she was unapologetically woman. And uh, she commanded that people see her as she was um, for everything that she brought to the table and that she not be required to shrink in order to be her full self. In addition to her being genius when it comes mm -hmm. to musical production, her voice being flawless and having uh, an immaculate level of control over it, she really just stood out as someone who um, was formidable and uh, was a true example of um, how you move in the world in a way that people respect who you are um, and that you don't change yourself to fit into a world that really doesn't want to accept you. So that's what she meant to me. Detroit, born in Memphis, raised in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Eric. Yeah, um, to piggyback off of that, um, yeah, I mean, for me, my mother, I grew up with, the, you know, hearing her songs all throughout you know, my childhood and my mother sort of, um, we, you know, we had pictures of her, we had pictures of her and Sam Cooke. And to mm -hmm. me, like, she was almost like a, a second mother to me because <laughs> she reminded me of my mother. She, you know, everything about her was um, something that was familiar. Um, you know, whether it was the way, that she, like you mentioned, you know, the way that she carried herself, the way that she sang, the way that she um, presented herself, and like you said, commanded respect, um, was, you know, something that was familiar to me from, you know, my teachers to people in the neighborhood to anybody. Like, she represented black womanhood. Um, and then her, her voice, like, there is nothing that's comparable to that. Um, and, and, you know, her gospel beginnings were she didn't... Um, you know, she didn't forsake that in order to move into R&B or to go into pop. There was always that gospel sound within nearly every song that she sang, you know, um, up until, she, you know, she passed, really. So, and, that and then that incredible lengthy career, yeah. you're talking about, like, she had 42 solo albums. Like, that's unheard of. Um, and, and to continue to... Uh, 
you know, just continue that kind of career from, you know, as a little girl, uh, you know, an amazing pianist as a little girl up until, uh, you know, the hip hop generation is just, I, I, I can't, I don't know anyone else that compares to that. I so. love that so many people um, have been able to experience Aretha um, firsthand as they come into um, the world, right? So you have the hip hop generation being able to see her at the Grammys. And I remember right. in the 80s when she sang opera at the Grammys, I think the story is. Oh, right, that's right. Um, was it Paparazzi? Right. 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 Yeah. Um, couldn't make it, and she just right. stepped in with maybe an hour or two to prepare and commanded the operatic performance as if she were rehearsing her entire life for that moment. But it wasn't necessary because she was the queen. Yeah. Um, and you have so many of us having firsthand experiences, regardless of age, across um, several generations, yeah. being able to experience her um, and her gifts and talents in ways that are um, still so palpable that the, there is no generational divide between people speaking about her loss. If you look at social media, mm -hmm. you have even the Gen Zs, right, who are like, yeah, you know, she was amazing. And I'm like, what, what do you know about Aretha? Right. You know, you're a baby. But, I, you know, you could say that to me. What do you know about Aretha? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> when I was your age, I was, you know, front row and center, yeah. right? But, yeah. you know, it was that kind of talent. And, you know, the thing I think that probably also connects with um, the youngest generations that are exposed to Aretha is definitely the gift that keeps on giving, which is previous performances where or, or interviews where... Um, she was using her voice and using it in a way to make clear what her opinion was unabashedly. As a woman, especially. As yes. a woman. As but, a black woman as well. I'm just, yeah. But I'm also just... willing to offer critique. Yes. And not back yeah. down and yeah. do it in a way that was, as we sometimes say, nice, nasty. <laughs> <laughs> or throw in shade. Throw in yeah. shade. She's the shade queen. Not only is she the queen of soul, but definitely the shade queen. Yes. There was none before her. There, there may be none after her, but she is the gift that keeps on giving. And, and it was, it was I mean, so she was the, grateful. I mean, she, she was the original. She's the one who brought her style of music to the broader world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, because when you think about Aretha, she came on the scene as the battle against segregation was at its full height. Um, and she supported King and she supported that and walked with him. And you, and it was, it was a time when the black world was making its presence known to America and the world as you, this will not be ignored. Mm -hmm. Right. And she was the voice of that in many ways. That's why we say she's our DNA. Mm -hmm. She's our cultural DNA. Mm -hmm. She's our singing DNA. Right. You know, it's who she is. Yeah. And, and, and against, you know, like the forces that be, you know, so a lot of times the record labels didn't want their artists to, you know, speak out and she, she made her own path. And she also didn't fit the mold for what they wanted yep. in appearance for, yeah. you know, a, a soul diva, R&B diva. And, and, you know, she loved her full self and I loved it too. Yeah. Um, and it is a wonder to see so many people who came up with her paying homage to her, right? With Patti LaBelle and right. Mavis Staples and all of these yeah. folk, just no questions asked. She was the queen, w regardless of what I felt about her, any difference I had with her, there is no question and all should pay that respect. Yeah. Yeah. I feel my knees next week and beg Mavis to come on the show here with us and talk that a bit about amazing. that. <laughs> yeah, even Etta James. Yeah. Could you yeah. talk to a lot of people who knew her and worked with her for your book? Right, right. yeah. And it's funny, um, for Al Bell from Stax Records, Stax Records. He, he wrote the foreword for my book, but for whatever reason, Stax missed the opportunity to sign her, which would have been, you know, an amazing collaboration with, you know, Al Bell and all of the people that were on Stax Records. But, you know, she managed to make a way with, Atlantic and um, you know Columbia before that, and Arista. But just imagining what Stax would have done wow. with her would have been a whole mm -hmm. another you know. What was that story you were telling before you walked into the studio about when they wanted to cut her contract? Oh, they went which to, one? There was a record company that was going to cut her contract because she wasn't selling. Oh yeah, so yeah, so Jerry Wexler. Um, Jerry so, Wexler, that was it. Yeah. 
my kids know Aretha primarily from the Sparkle soundtrack because I listen to it oh, right, consistently. Right, right. And I, I've watched <laughs> the movie cons <laughs> you know, too many times that I know the words. But anyway, so um, I was telling them about how at one point um, Aretha had two albums that had not charted. And this was 74, 74 and I think it's 72 were the last two albums. So Jerry Wexler had considered dropping her from Atlantic. And um, uh, Ahmet Erdogan, Erdogan had suggested that she work with Curtis Mayfield. Mm -hmm. And they you know, put together the Sparkle soundtrack, which did phenomenally well. Right. And so that's what kept her on the label. Wow. But could you imagine if they had dropped Aretha, like how? No, that was, <laughs> it was not in the stars, so it was not gonna happen. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so before we conclude, you know, I was thinking about, it, we were saying this before we went, went uh, on the air together, that, that I always consider one of her final performances when she performed um, for, when Carol King got the Gershman Prize from Barack Obama. <laughs> And that particular concert, that song when she came out, and what it did to the audience, with yeah. Barack Obama's up there crying, and 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 Carole King was beside herself, not knowing what to do, who had written so many of the songs that right. that Aretha sang. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when she got up on the stage and she threw that coat off, <laughs> <laughs> prime Aretha, <laughs> like you are not worthy, coat off. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. you know, those. She had so many of those moments, but when they happened, you kind of melt further into her because it's like, yes, we are yeah. so honored. And Carol King, when you watch that performance, um, you would have thought it was an honor for Aretha because Carol yeah. loves her so. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's when genius recognizes genius, mm -hmm. who are you to question whether or not she can drop her coat and go to sing, Amen. right? That's right. So yeah. it was... It, <laughs> A beautiful thing, but a long line of moments where you just see her, you know, some people call themselves a diva, but she was due that title. And she wasn't yes. Thank you. in the way she behaved right. and acted towards other human beings. Right, mm -hmm. right. Closing mm -hmm. thought from you, Ms. Black? Um, wow, no, the Kalua said it all, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, I mean, she she earned the right to be a diva in every way. In the truest sense, every not way. in the prima donna right. sense. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Not in the way that... Well, Aretha Franklin, the woman who spoke to all of us throughout the planet as a woman who understood a deep political and human consciousness as a woman, as a black woman, as somebody who just believed in life. Uh, this is just a taste of what Real News is going to give you. Next week, we're going to do our best to bring you a string of incredible people talking about Aretha Franklin. And a week from Friday, a week from today, when we're, when we're taping this, we're going to bring that back to you because uh, we have to remember this woman who uh, defines everything about who we are. Uh, as Americans, uh, as citizens of this world. Uh, Rita Franklin, rest easy. We miss you. You'll always be with us. And Glilla Harris and Erica Bond, thank you so much for, jump for jumping in today. It's great thank to have you. you two here. Thank you. And I'm Mark Steiner for the Real News Network. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll be talking together soon. Aretha's coming back to us. Take care. <laughs>